Right, uh, hello. So, I've got a few plans with this car, including, uh, like, putting a turbo on it one day, maybe. Preparing for the turbo. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. I've been wanting to put a turbo on this car from before I even actually bought it. Now, back then I was 14 and really didn't understand the amount of time, effort, knowledge, money, work and a lot of other things that would take. However, here we are about a year and a half later and I'm very excited to finally be able to say welcome to episode one of Turbocharging my K11 Nissan Micra. In this episode, I'll be fabricating my very own custom equal length stainless steel turbo manifold. I started planning and designing this manifold a good few months back and I finally have a design that I'm happy with and I also have all the materials that I need to actually fabricate. With that being said, I've never actually welded a manifold like ever before. So it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how this turns out. By no means am I expecting it to turn out really good, uh, but I definitely want to learn as I go and um, hopefully we get a decent result. So let's get into it. So I'd like to start off by saying all the work will either be done in the driveway or in this shed. Right here we got the welder, we got a 12 size cup with a nice fancy filter on there, gas setup with a purge. We'll probably be using the grinder and the drill at some point. To actually cut the stainless steel I'll be using this because I am not buying a 700 euro bandsaw. It won't work as well but I'll make it work. In terms of the material here we have all the bends for the actual exhaust and also for the manifold here. They're all 1D radius bends, uh, 1.5 and 2.5 inch. And then here we have the flanges for the manifold that goes onto the cylinder head, that goes onto the turbo outlet and that goes onto the turbo inlet. Also forgot to mention this right here I just got in the mail today. Uh, the big ones are obviously for the main exhaust and then this right here is what I'll be using for the straight sections of the manifold. In this copybook, I got all the bends uh, and degree angles and stuff that I need to cut to make the manifold. I have all the pieces written out. So, um, yeah, let's get cutting some stainless steel bends. So, the first step to making the manifold was to cut out all the pieces out of the 90 degree bends which I bought. I designed and 3D printed this tool to help me make the cuts since I don't really have professional tools. And surprisingly, this actually did help out a lot. I would sand the bends to get the center line and after marking them out using the tool and making a small notch using a grinder, I would cut them with the miter saw. Obviously, the cuts weren't 100% accurate and the finish wasn't great either, but considering the circumstances, I think it went really well. I would then use a flap disc on a grinder to clean up the cuts and and get rid of any small imperfections and the cuts actually turned out really well. The edges were fairly straight and clean which would be good for welding especially since I wanted to purge the inside. And eventually after repeating this process for hours over numerous days bit by bit I started to get all the pieces which I needed for the manifold. With all of the pieces ready, it was time to prep them for welding, so I used this drill attachment to deburr them and then started to mock up the manifold to mark out where I need to weld and at what angles and all of that stuff. Alright, so right here I have most of the manifold mocked up using tape. It's all fitting fairly well. As you can see, that's going to go right there. And then we have this other one which will join the two of them. Next up, I'm going to start tacking all these pieces together and then start tacking it all together kind of and then take some bits off, weld them properly, purge them. So let's get into it. I started off by tacking all of the pieces together which wasn't very easy because some of the cuts weren't perfectly straight which led to some gaps and once that was done I started to actually weld the manifold. You can see that I used tin foil to purge the inside of the pipe because I wanted the welds to be nice and clean inside and outside which kind of worked most of the time. And once again after hours of work over numerous days I could finally start to see the manifold come together in real life. 
And after a lot of welding, this right here is what we have. Keeping in mind, it's the first ever manifold which I have ever fabricated. I think it came out all right. But I also think looking back on it now that I've gone for something way too tricky. Some of the welds are decent. Some of them are absolutely horrible. I hope they all hold and that they're decent enough. So yeah, this was the manifold, except it wasn't fully done, but we'll get onto that later. Once again, I think it came out alright, and for anyone wondering, I actually welded the back side of the tubes on the back of the flange, and then grinded them down to have a flat surface to go onto the cylinder head. If you take a look inside the manifold, you can see what I mean by the purging kind of worked. Some places it really didn't, and I got a bit of sugaring, but in other places it worked decent. But once again, it's the first time I've ever welded a manifold, and I don't really have any professional equipment or anything like that, so I think it's quite good. I just hope it doesn't crack or leak. Anyway. Now obviously the manifold isn't finished yet because I still need to add a small extension at the bottom that's going to go into a flange and that's going to connect to the turbo. But to do that I first want to put the manifold onto the engine and actually see how much space I have. Now here's the thing, when I designed this manifold I didn't really think about the oil feed for the engine. So basically I've made a manifold that doesn't even fit this engine so I have a problem. However I also have a grinder. Right, well, that worked, kind of. And there we go, the manifold now fits onto the engine. I will need to make a bracket down there just to hold the rubber hose away from the manifold. I'll probably bolt it up to that stud, but we're going to worry about that later. For now, I'm going to work on the final few bits for the turbo manifold so we can mount the turbo to the actual manifold. I'm thinking something like this. This way, I'll only have to add the 180 up into here and then the drain for the oil is going to go into the sump. The feed will be here coming up from there and then the exhaust is going to go out and down and then the intercooler piping is going to go somewhere here. So, a few hours later and this right here is what I have come up with. Basically it's just a 90 degree bend going into 3 centimeters of straight pipe before going into another 90. And in here obviously I have welded the bung for the wideband O2 sensor which I'll tell you more about in the next episode. So I'm going to weld this piece right onto there like this and then we're going to weld the flange out here. And that's going to be the manifold done. And not too long later, the turbo manifold is finally done, I, I think. Looking at it from here, you may be wondering about like clearance and there, there kind of is some if you look at it from, from here. Yeah, that should do the job. And here on the front, it is just about not touching the bumper, but we're gonna have to cut some of it out anyway because we're gonna need to route a bit of pipe to the intercooler. But I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'll worry about it when time comes, I guess. I've taken the bumper off so you can see more of the details. Uh, that's the, don't mind those welds, they're horrible. There we have the um, O2 sensor. And then, yeah, I mean, it's it's done. It's That's kind of it, really. So that pretty much wraps it up for episode one. I'm fairly happy with how it turned out, but I am a bit worried because I know the welds aren't great. I hope they will hold and I won't have any cracks down the road. If I do though, it could be an excuse to just make another setup, make, maybe make a better one and run a bigger turbo, maybe something more simple. But it should work now the way it is. I don't see why it shouldn't. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, do consider subscribing and also check out the links in the description for the other socials. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll see you in episode two.